Good evening to everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here tonight, and Jim and I are so thrilled to represent our Board of Trustees. For those of you who don't know, you all do now, my name is Debbie Cooper, and together with Jim, we are thrilled to welcome you to the 2020 State of School. Joining us tonight are such a beautiful and filled room of current parents, faculty, donors, grandparents, and even prospective families. We are so glad you're here, and we are so grateful for your ongoing commitment, trust, and investment in DC. We are appreciative of the questions that many of you sent in advance, and we've done our best to address them through the presentation, but we will also have time at the end to address some of those questions and to open it to the audience for more questions as well. Our goal for tonight is for all of you to walk away with a clear understanding of where our school stands today. We want you to be reinvested in our mission, which is more compelling and critical than ever in today's changing world. We want you to be excited about the educational investments and enhancements already underway now that Gary is halfway through his first year, only halfway through his first year. We want you to be amazed as you see how even after only a few months in this beautiful new building, the educational experience of our students has been transformed. We know that you are always inspired by the work of our faculty and our division heads as they continually work to enhance your child's learning and development each day. And we want you to be informed about the competing pressures facing independent schools today, including Bernard Zell, and how the board and administration partner tirelessly and passionately to prioritize the right investments in our school and make hard decisions in making sure our school is strong both today and into the future. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, was anyone there today in the second grade Tubi Shvat program? Gary was there, Leon was there, great, wonderful. So we were there too. And if you weren't there, you can take a peek. Blue Blum was completely transformed into a beautiful forest of trees and populated with an even more beautiful crop of second graders and their teachers. <coughs> in preparation for the upcoming holiday of Tubi Shvat, which starts early <coughs> next week, Noah, my second grader, has been excited for the last several weeks to show off the olive tree project that he, Jack, and Ella have been working on over the last few weeks, learning about the different parts of the tree and building a model of it. As he excitedly talked about this project in our house, he told us that almond trees were the first to bloom in Israel. And actually, I have a colleague who's in Israel this week, and I was telling him about that and said, did you know? And then he snapped a picture, and he said, oh, look, they're actually blooming. And why is this important? Because Gabe, my seventh grader, told me that when the blooming of the olive trees, half almond trees, happened in Israel, it was a sign in ancient times that tithes were due. So essentially, it was the April 15th of uh, ancient times. And that's how people knew to bring their crops to the temple. And so it's pretty cool to actually really see that connection. I showed that picture to my kids. They're like, wow, like, this really happens. Uh, Judah, my fifth grader, had already come home and told me about the provisions in the Torah that relate to caring for trees. For example, he shared that in Deuteronomy, even during times of war and you go in to conquer a city, there are prohibitions about cutting down trees. And this led to a passionate conversation in his class about climate change and why it's our obligation to protect the world. Many parents also had the chance to experience Tu B'Shvat this year at a Tu B'Shvat Seder with Jewish Studies vision leader Hagit Lewis as she hosted over 30 women in her home using our ancient traditions and our recipes to encourage reflection and spiritual growth in a way that was both highly accessible and deeply Jewish. And so in thinking about even this one experience, this one holiday um, has an impact on our kids and our families and how Bernard Zell is making Judaism relevant, additive, and meaningful arts to, for our students and our families, I was reminded once again of why I'm so grateful to send our kids to this school. I should say my husband and I were reminded once again of my family. Um, you know, are there other places in the city where children learn about the science of trees and climate change and the mechanics of a tax system? Likely, probably. Where parents get together and connect to their deeper selves? Less likely, but maybe. But what's unique about Bernard Zell is that every single day, our talented faculty draws on the wisdom, text, and history of our people to help our children learn to make sense of the world today, to understand their place in it, and to be agents for change. Emory psychologist Marshall Duke posits that the more children know about their family's history and collective story, the stronger their sense of control over their lives, and the higher their self-esteem and their confidence. He refers to this concept as having an intergenerational self knowing that you belong to something larger than yourself. 
The story of the Jewish people is our story. And whether it's something that you were born into, you chose on your own, or you are somehow making Judaism a part of your family's story, this is Bernard's secret sauce, and this is our history. It's our differentiating, fa differentiating factor. I haven't heard most of the alumni speak, I haven't met most of the alumni who are speaking tonight, but yet I am confident that we will hear threads of this as they talk about how their Bernard Zell experience provided the foundation for not only their successes in high school, college, and beyond, but fundamentally who they are as people. And so just for right now, I'd like the faculty who made this possible and the everyday experience for all of your children possible to please rise so we can take Bishmat for a minute and the symbolism of a tree. I know many of us, many, probably most of us, if not all of us, feel grateful and lucky to be able to give our children the foundational gift of Bernard Zell education. But as all of those of us who have read The Giving Tree know, that if you don't protect the foundation, the tree stops bearing fruit and loses its assets. It is the role of the Board of Trustees to care for and protect the foundation, our school which has stood strong for over 73 years. So on the screen behind me is the names of the 2019-2020 Board of Trustees. As you can see, we have a diverse mix of parents, alumni parents, alumni, and community members. These 23 trustees serve on the board for one reason only, because they care passionately about the strength and vitality of this school, both for their own children and grandchildren, as well as for future children and families who will walk through these doors in years to come. Will our board members please rise so we can recognize you tonight. Thank you. Next slide. And then one of the goals that Jim and I have had since becoming chairs is to increase the number of parents serving alongside board members to accomplish the work of the school. In all but one of our committees, which is the Committee on Trustees, which is the governance committee of the school, each committee has parents and alum alumni parents partnering together with trustees to carry out its work. If you are serving on one of our board committees, will you please stand so we can recognize your service to our school. very special mention tonight to the PTC, so capably led by Tracy Ankin, for its partnership with our amazing school leadership to do so many things on behalf of our school. It's a pleasure to serve with you on the board, and we're grateful for you and the leadership of the executive board to work with us, so thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to transition to Jim, my co-chair, who is going to introduce himself a little bit and share with you um, what we've been up to over the last uh, six months. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going part way up to Terry. <laughs> uh, terrific. Thanks, Debbie. It's, uh, it is such a uh, privilege to partner with Debbie. This is the first time in the uh, school's history that we've that we've had co-chairs uh, of the board and just you know as we looked at all that we're trying to, to do as an organization uh, you know a couple of years ago with the transition of a new head of school coming on board the capital campaign the incredible uh, transformation that's under underway of the school you know we, we knew it would take at least two fortunately Debbie is about 1.95 of that, which is why most of you probably don't know me. Um, uh, but it's been incredible uh, partnering with uh, with Debbie. I learned something new uh, every day, uh, and of course, uh, partnering with uh, with Gary as uh, as the leader of the school. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my my wife uh, Allie and myself are very proud uh, parents of three alums from uh, Bernard Zell, uh, uh, class of 2012. 2013 and 2016, two boys and a girl. My, my oldest is actually graduating, I hope, uh, from, uh, from college uh, this, uh, this May. He's, he's in good shape. You know, he's, he's too, I think he's having too much fun in, uh, in New Orleans. Um, and uh, this school was transformational for my family. This was our home when we moved uh, here to Chicago. It was the, the place that was our community, our friends, and, and being able to serve on the board and serve as co-chair on the board is uh, the greatest gift that this school could give uh, myself uh, and, and my family and 
happy to happy to serve in that capacity. Uh, so since uh, the uh, since we met last year, um, the board has been working incredibly hard on a number uh, of uh, inc uh, very important strategic initiatives in partnership uh, with the uh, with the many committees that Debbie talked about, and most importantly with the amazing. Uh, leadership here at, uh, at, at the school and with, uh, obviously with many of you in this room. And what I'd like to do is just share some of the uh, key areas of focus and accomplishments uh, that were all guided by the strategic plan that we've uh, shared in the past. First and foremost, our number one priority as a board uh, was identifying and bringing on board an incredibly talented and gifted uh, leader in, uh, in uh, Gary Weisserman. And we are so blessed uh, that Gary uh, and his family uh, uh, have, uh, have moved here to Chicago and given the school the leadership that it really, uh, really uh, deserves uh, to have. Um, uh, over time, uh, Gary will share uh, a lot of the specifics as to what's been going on uh, at the school from an educational and mission perspective. But the one thing I would like to highlight is we do uh, uh, perform a, a semi-annual uh, parent survey to really track how we are doing as an institution, take the feedback, learn from uh, that feedback to get better, but also to get a, a measuring stick on are we making the progress we need to make. I'm very pleased uh, to report that the uh, survey that just came back uh, indicated that the parent satisfaction across the school is at the highest level that it's ever been at uh, since the survey uh, was first done. In And obviously, the transition is uh, going uh, going incredibly uh, incredibly well. Uh, uh, the second big initiative uh, that uh, seems like it was going on for many many years under uh, Marna's leadership with uh, Dana Hurt uh, and Barry Malkin was the capital uh, campaign, and that campaign was by far uh, the largest campaign uh, this school has ever undertaken. The 19 million dollars that was raised to to, uh, to build this transformational educational. Uh, facility that we're able to enjoy tonight, but most importantly, that our faculty uh, and uh, and and your kids are able to enjoy uh, day in uh, and day out. Um, uh, it's really helped to transform uh, Bernard Zell, and want to thank everybody who's been a part of this effort. I think to date, 50% uh, of the current families have participated in the campaign. Hopefully, it will get as close to 100% as we possibly uh, uh, can get, because we still want to make sure that we properly. Uh, endow the facility for uh, for for the future. Uh, obviously, Audris uh, Wong could not have uh, done, you know, built this facility without Audris's uh, tireless tireless uh, leadership. <laughs> to be able to get the facility up and running somehow, we had a few challenges at the uh, last minute. Um, uh, uh, pretty much uh, on uh, on on time and and uh, and on budget was was something that most organizations that are. Uh, even Fortune 500 corporations are not able to achieve, but we have Audris, uh, our secret <laughs> weapon. Uh, and the facility uh, yeah, obviously has just seamlessly been integrated into our day-to-day uh, in, -day, uh, operations. We're also incredibly uh, fortunate to have a tremendous leader of our uh, security uh, in Matt Tobias, who joined us last year. Obviously, the security of our uh, of our facility, our kids, our faculty is of the utmost uh, importance. Uh, we're also blessed uh, to have incredible uh, leadership in this committee. Scooter Simon leads our facilities committee, as, a, uh, as, as well as uh, an active member of the security facility. And then we have two uh, incredibly talented, uh, world class talents, actually, in the field of security. Michael Masters is on the, on, the, on the board, and Ron Huberman. I think the team has done. Uh, this facility, you know, in an urban environment, one of one of the the, the most uh, safe schools, you know, na nationally, and we're taking very, uh, we take this uh, responsibility very seriously, and and we have incredible talent uh, that's supporting us uh, day in and day out under Matt's leadership and the committee's leadership. Uh, we also spend a significant amount of time as a board um, uh, to really understand the trends that are impacting our school, our community. Uh, Jewish day schools in general, uh, and things that could have a, a long-term impact uh, on enrollment, uh, on our budget, to make sure that we're prioritizing our investments in, in, uh, in, in the core things that, that we're here to do, which is to make sure that we give an incredible uh, Jewish uh, uh, education uh, to all the students that are here. 
uh, and also make sure that we're running the school as operationally efficient as possible. Uh, this is a real challenge uh, for all institutions. It's a challenge that uh, Jewish day schools across the country are, uh, are, are dealing with, and we are, uh, we are uh, uh, not immune to some of those, uh, those challenges. And balancing accessibility and affordability uh, is something that we take uh, incredibly uh, serious as, as, as a board, uh, all in the light of making sure that we have a financially sustainable and viable uh, uh, organization for many, many, many uh, years to come. <coughs> Um, we always look at this with a, uh, a, a very caring and empathetic uh, approach uh, and from year to year contend with uh, many difficult decisions that often are not uh, visible uh, to, the, uh, to the broader, uh, broader community. Um, and this year's tuition increase was something that uh, was taken with that uh, seriousness uh, at heart. Adam's going to uh, share a lot more of the context and background because we think it's important uh, to be transparent as a board and as an organization to some of the uh, things that we are facing, uh, but uh, obviously moving into a new facility and the broader operational scope um, uh, are all things that uh, factored, uh, factored into it, and we'll come back and talk to that because I know uh, it's a topic that folks uh, want to cover. Um, we also uh, have spent a significant amount of time with, uh, with uh, Gary uh, and the division heads uh, in uh, providing more mission level support to the portrait of the graduate work, which Gary's going to talk about. It's an incredibly exciting uh, initiative to really uh, 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 give a clear vision on what a graduate of uh, Bernard Zell should look like. Uh, and a number of our uh, board uh, members with deep uh, educational uh, experience, Cheryl, Cheryl Bellick uh, uh, and Danny, have, have played a, an important role there, as well as the board as a whole has spent significant time uh, with uh, Gary and, uh, and the team. Uh, we also uh, uh, partner very closely with the synagogue. We, we run a joint campus, a joint facility, and, and making sure that we're operationalizing that facility uh, in the most efficient uh, and collaborative way as we possibly can is a, is a high priority for us. So on behalf of Debbie and myself, I uh, just want to let you know that it, it really is a privilege to be here tonight, a privilege to be, uh, uh, be co-chair uh, of the board uh, at this very exciting uh, as well as a time of, uh, of great change uh, um, for uh, our organization and for our community. Uh, the number one guiding principle uh, that we have is to ensure our children experience a top quality education rooted in a strong uh, set of <coughs> Jewish wisdom uh, and values in a safe, caring um, uh, environment. Uh, and that experience uh, can be shared and made available not just to the students by our incredible faculty, uh, but also to all the families uh, that are here tonight and throughout, uh, throughout the entire uh, Bernard Zell uh, community. Everything we do, every decision we make uh, is with this uh, in mind. Uh, 